At this point, we've been saving some data, and we've been outputting it to the console very basically. What we want to do is show it on screen. So let's back up to before our script begins. Let's give ourselves a new line 9. Um, just to get fancy, we're going to have a button. You click the button to display the data on screen. So, because we've got plain old um, JavaScript here, nothing fancy with jQuery or jQuery Mobile, we can do this very, very basically. We have the button tag. So we'll write button that will create a button. Between the button tags, uh, we'll have this just called show, perhaps. And um, that needs an ID. It needs a unique identifier or a class. That needs an ID so that we can reference it via jQuery easily. And I'll call this btn show. This will be our button to show the data from the object. I also want to put a placeholder to take this data and show it on screen. So next line, we'll create a div. The generic div container division. It's just an empty generic container with an ID so that we can reference it via JavaScript. Call this uh, div show. Okay, so I want to make that button active. I want to make it clickable. And then I want to retrieve the data from the database, from the JSON object, and then display that on screen, render it, in the HTML section. So a button and then an ID. We'll go down to uh, back to our JavaScript. I'm going to go all the way to the end, line 45, var. We're going to create a variable, uh, two variables. We've got two objects on the screen we want to deal with, the button and the div. So I'll call this el, short for element. This is very common. This is element element btn show. We've got the element on screen of the button here. In JavaScript, I'm going to reference it. Equals to document dot get element. Remember, we don't have jQuery mobile, so we can't do the dollar symbol jQuery selector. So this is the old-fashioned way. By ID. There's some element on the screen. Let's get it. Let's get a reference to it. Let's make it an object, an element in JavaScript. Which element? The one that we called uh, btn show. Mind the spelling, of course. Up on the HTML, it's called btn show, capital S. Here I'm doing capital B, capital S. You can do it all lowercase, of course. It's easier to remember. At the end of the line, comma, because I want to define one more variable. I want to borrow the var keyword. Next line, el uh, div show, and that's defined as document dot get element by id, and the particular element in question there is div show end of line, semicolon. We've got a button element that we are now able to use in JavaScript, and now we've got a reference to the div element that we can use or manipulate in JavaScript. Next line. Okay, we want to make an event handler here. We want to make it so that if we click on uh, the button, it will display the data. We've, we've got a reference to the button, L button show, but to actually make it behave after a click, EL button show dot add event listener method. We've got the object of the button dot uh, the, what's it called the member operator um, the method add event listener to this button we're gonna wait 
for an event. We're going to listen for an event. The event that we're listening for is a click. Again, with jQuery Mobile, we had the on click, we had that sort of syntax, a lot less typing. That's one of the great things about jQuery. You know, that's that library, it's that framework, its slogan is write less, do more. So this can all be simplified much faster with jQuery, but we don't have the jQuery reference, so we do it the old way. Second argument of that method is after we click on the button, run a function. Let's call this um, fn for function show name, comma, final argument here, false. This one is just the way it is. If we do, if we create active buttons like this way with an add event listener, most of the time you're simply going to add the final false argument. Um, something about preventing default behavior, a bubbling, something complex we don't have to worry about, but oftentimes that's just the way you do it. You define what event, in this case click, what function to run, and then just put false. Most of the time it's just false. When you need it to be true, for it to, be, to, change, to go back to the default behavior, you'll know when to do it, but most of the time it's false. Next line, function fn show name. We need to define what is show name. It's a function. You could. That is, you know, to kind of be more following in what we've already done. So either or will work, actually. Let's do it that way, just so that it's obvious that it's a function. But just for me to save two bytes, I didn't put it in. But yes, you. That's, that, that works as well. So um, we're going to run the function, we're defining the function there. Just to make sure it's working, we'll do a quick alert here to make it sure that we click this. We clicked. Save it and run it. Click the button, you should get an alert. Um, if you didn't get the alert, we need to check our spelling. We've done a few things here. Confirm mine. Oops, what am I missing here? We clicked. Oh, okay, then, then that's why. No, we don't use the parentheses there. Yeah. So, no parentheses here because the function executed right away. Mm, the thing about JavaScript is that if, depending on the circumstance, um, this thinks execute the function right away without waiting for the click. So don't put parentheses there because you will see that it pops up right away without any feedback. No parentheses there. That then says, okay, go run the function, show name, but without parentheses or else it will execute. So in this format of add event listener, this is our syntax. We have other ways to do it where we would put the parentheses, but not at this moment. Confirm that. So we've got a button, we click show, it goes up to we clicked. So no parentheses on that. Okay, so we've got this data in the superhero object. We want to make that look nice, put it together in a meaningful way, and display it on screen. So we'll create a variable. This is a local scope variable. This is a variable that's created at the moment that we click the button. So this data doesn't exist until we click. And we'll display it on screen. We'll call this, uh, we'll just call it str string. I'm going to display a string of data on screen. This can be called anything, of course, but this is a string of data based on the data of our database. Equals 
we've got a last name, a first name, a hero name, various superpowers, and an image. So I want to say Spider-Man's real name is Peter Parker. One of his secret one of his superpowers is Spidey Sense. It's the precognitive ability, etc. So I want to display a sentence based on that data. So first what I'm going to say here then is um, the name of the hero, which is uh, superhero dot hero name. So here that's going to say Spider-Man space plus. We need to continue to build this string. Spider-Man's real name is, and then his real name. So in quotes here, apostrophe S, so that's going to say Spider-Man's real name is space. Then I want to display the data from last name and first name in the order first name, last name. Uh, plus on that, I'm going to break this to the next line just so that it fits on my screen. It could be one long line. I'm going to put it on the next line there, but make sure you've got a plus there. My, my statement is not done yet, so no semicolon. I'm still building my string. So Spider-Man's real name is Peter Parker. So that would be superhero dot first name Peter Parker. Peter space Parker. So plus space quote. We need to define the empty space between Peter and Parker. So we add, we keep adding to the string with the plus symbol, concatenation, we keep adding to the string Peter space Parker. So, uh, super, oops, plus, because we keep, we, we're adding more to the string, superhero dot last name, Spider-Man's real name is Peter space Parker dot, or period, for a new line, um, space plus quotes dot I want a new line so I can write the BR tag here to break that into a new line we're gonna render this eventually as HTML so that will be rendered as HTML eventually and does that line plus next line just to not make it too long on screen. Peter Parker's real name is, or Spider-Man's real name is Peter Parker. Dot. One of his powers is, so in quotes, one of his powers is space. Remember to mind those spaces because if I don't put a space, it will not show a space. One of his powers is plus superhero dot superpower from from the section of zero all the po all the power names the names of the powers are in the zero with position um, dot power zero one one of his powers is Spidey Sense. Parentheses, explaining what Spidey Sense is. So plus on that. Next line. Space parenthesis. Plus superhero dot super power from index 1, which is a list of all of our descriptions of powers, desk 1, um, 
end of the parenthesis, and the dots, and then finally end of line, semicolon. That ends the whole string. There's a lot there. It's very technically straightforward. This could be more complex. It will need to be more complex later to be dynamic, because right now I've got one character saved. Using JSON in, in a little bit, we can, we'll have to talk about, well, I want to save 10 superheroes, and all of those superheroes have a last name, a first name, a hero name, a superpower, one and two, and a super description, one and two. So then we're getting more complex with lots of data. Right now we've got one character to work with, and we'll see how does JSON work to let us save multiple characters with multiple data. Um, we've built this string. We want to display it on screen. Next line. We've got that div placeholder on screen defined as L div show. Dot inner HTML. We're going to set the property of that element. We're going to set the inner HTML property. We're going to we're going to render some HTML equals string. That string has data as well as plain text as well as HTML. Take that, render it, show it on the screen, save it, and run it. With a button click, all of this data hopefully should display on screen. So I'm going to save and run that. I've got JSON. I've got the button that we made. Nothing will happen until you click the button. Scarlet Spider's real name is Peter Parker. One of his powers is wall crawling. Can stick to just about any surface. Period. So I kept saying Spider-Man, but remember, we redefined what hero name was at some point, so it said the new hero name. That's that so far. So it's displaying on screen, and all of that data, we showed it on screen. Let's pause here. Did everyone get that kind of result with uh, that output? It's very easy to uh, Make a mistake here, of course, because we've got all these pluses and we're stringing this along. We're building this string with all those pluses. Make sure they're in the right place. Very easy to lose track of them. We need any help on that. We have an image, not a real image. We're going to get a real image in a moment. But we've got an image that we could display on screen. So in order for this to work, in order for the image to work, I'm going to go online and do a quick search for an image of Spider-Man. We'll search. Find plenty of them out there. So what I want to do is I want to get the link to an image.
also find any picture at all that you want and get the address. So make sure the address ends in a .jpg or a .ping, some kind of graphic. Um, we'll find a picture of Spider-Man. Make sure that the path to the picture is a is a real graphic. If it says something else like, you know, slash Spider-Man, it's probably not really a graphic, it's a page. So try to find some picture. You don't have to save it, you don't have to download it, you just need a link to that picture. That is going to be my link that I'm going to add here. I've got head photo, body photo, I'll put this in I'll put this wherever, head photo. You just need a picture. So I've got a link there. Obviously I'm not going to ask you to type that, but that's why. Go find a picture online of the character and put it into the head photo or body photo um, field. That's a, that's a real valid picture. Okay, so it's a full address. I want to display that picture in my JSON practice file. So we have the image tag. We have image src equals this. So this data, we can load it up when we need it and display it on screen. I've got the string that I've built so far. I want to add a little bit more to it. We can keep doing more pluses at the end of that, but it's also very common to do it this way before I display the final string. I'm going to add a little bit more to that string. I defined, uh, I, uh, I created the string and then I assigned data to it. Well, I want to add more data to what already is in the string. So this time I will write simply string plus equals to the variable that already exists add more data. A single equals is assignment. Take what's on the right, dump what's ever here, and fill it with that data. Plus equals is keep the data that exists and add more to it. Be very careful, be very careful we've got the plus equals. What I'm going to add there, in quotes, semicolon there before I forget about it, is uh, Let's say a new P pair. So this will break it to its own line. A brand new paragraph after this data. We call this data new paragraph, new line. Inside of the paragraph, I'll have the image tag, source attribute equals single quotes. We've been doing double quotes all the time. Right here we need single quotes because let's say I, hear, I had here spiderman.jpg. Single quotes because if I had double quotes this would break my string. Double quote and double quote is one whole unit. And if I had used double quotes Right here, like I've always done, double quote, double quote, you should see something different via the colors. In my basic colors, gray is the string, and then suddenly that's black, and then gray again. Because I've started the string, I've then ended the string, there's a pair of quotes. I 
have something here, technically gibberish, and then another open quote and another end quote, that's another string. So double quotes right there would break my string. That's why single quotes is necessary here. It's going to start interpreting and processing up to this point, top to bottom, left to right. Okay, processing, processing, double quote, double quote, looking for double quote, double quote, and double quote. Processed. In the meantime, it then saw single quote. Okay, single quote, process, 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 single quote, end, double quote, end. So make sure those are single quotes. I put in Spider-Man JPEG as a placeholder because we've got the data in the database to load dynamically at this point. But if I started to write superhero blah blah blah, that's part of the string and it would then display literally that text, not what's in the data. So what I have to do here is I have to end on purpose this part of the string so that that can be filled in dynamically then continue the rest of the string. So watch this for a moment because it's going to look very confusing, but I'm going to end the quote, space plus, start the quote again. It's going to look very weird here. Yes, look at that single quote there. Well, that single quote is because that will eventually connect with here in the middle where we add our dynamic data. And then all of that was for that. So we've got a valid string there concatenation, a valid string there. That'll all just be processed with inner HTML eventually. Like that is how we're going to load up dynamic data so that it doesn't get processed like a string. So double quote, space plus, double quote, Call this thing again. Okay, image. This is zero with image. Okay. Um, superhero dot image zero dot head headshot head photo. Head photo space plus. Start our. HTML string end and then add whatever is in that database and then add the rest of the string. This will be processed. The web address will be inserted at that point when it's rendered. See, I'm going to save it and run it. And press the button, it'll show the data that's already been there. And then below it, hopefully, the picture of the character. Check online. So we'll refresh to the latest version. I'm going to click. There is the text. I never defined anything about the size of the picture. There's the picture. So did, did everyone get something like that?
at this point, um, we've focused on data of uh, one character. All of this data saved in the JSON object in the database is of one character. We did not set up our schema. We did not set up uh, our database really at this point to store multiple characters. We didn't quite know that that's what we wanted to do. We didn't quite know what is the syntax of it all and how does it work. So the schema that we've designed for this JSON object doesn't quite work to store a lot of different characters. So I'm gonna end this file and then we're going to kind of start again. Now that we have the idea, I want to store multiple characters with multiple fields. I then want to start my schema knowing what I want to save. Here I was freestyling a little bit, kind of showing you how it works. What I want to do now is then, for real, okay, let's set up a, a schema, a database that will really work. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to save my work at this point and make a copy of this file and delete everything between lines, you know, after the strict, all the way to the end of the function there. Uh, I, I want to, uh, you know, I want to do a, I want to do a save first, because my work up to this point works. I want to then save as, call this JSON practice 2. I want to delete everything from use strict, in my case line 14, down to line uh, 57. You know, taking it back to those sort of original 16 lines as a, as a plain, plain old file like that. I'm doing this in a copy of the file, obviously. Be careful. Don't delete your, all your work to this point. I did save as to make a copy, JSON practice 2. Because instead of typing all of these lines again by hand, I uh, just cut out all of the work that I did, but it's still near the file. Because now I want to think in terms about, let me create a JSON object to store my data in the, in the way that I sort of have envisioned. So let's all get back to this basic file again here. Okay, so I have my starting point, new variable, I'll call this um, hero db. This is our database to store the heroes. It's equal to a JSON object. Now, getting a little ahead of ourselves here, we are creating this JSON object in this file. Uh, on part two of the lecture, next time for this, we will talk about, okay, let's save all of this data in a separate .json file in a file that is separate. So we have an HTML file for all our HTML, a CSS file for all our CSS, a JavaScript file for all our JavaScript, and then we'll have a JSON file, .json, a JSON file for all our JSON data to keep it all separate and maintainable. 
because we will be able to store all of that data in a separate file in JSON and then load it as necessary into this file and be able to pass the data back and forth. That'll be for next time. Right here we're just doing it in one file for, for expediency. Break that into a couple of lines for readability. And what I'm doing here is my first field, hero1, colon, JSON object, oops, comma, hero2. You, you can use whatever numbers, but just to make it obvious, uh, don't write this very much, actually. I'm going to delete it. But uh, the concept is, in each of these, then, will be a whole set of data that means this hero, that hero, that hero, that hero. So don't get too far here. Because within here, I need to define last name, first name, hero name, gender, power, blah, 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 all of those fields. And so now, perhaps that I know a little bit better, what kind of data am I going to store? I'm going to start like a little template, which I can copy and paste, uh, to define my first characters. And then dynamically, I can make more characters in this database. So this is, I'm not going to do that just yet. But I need, actually, wait a minute. Uh, need here uh, no I think that'll be fine we need the um, yeah. We need that bundle of data. So figuring out this schema at the very beginning is obviously the most important step. So. Let me just think it through one quick moment because we're going to need hero 1, hero 2, hero 3. Yeah, this should work. Yeah, this should, this should work. But, uh, yeah, okay, curly braces. So, so what I'm trying to do here then is save the, um, save all of that bundle of data. Um, next, I'm going to break the curly braces down here, tab that over. I'm going to do that um, we've got a uh, hero name. And just for some placeholder data, Spider-Man. Next item is um, last name. I'm not going to recreate all of the data from before, but we'll do a little bit of it. Let's see, instead of powers, we'll Let's try image here. Unless we have the square brackets, the order of this data does not matter. Square brackets means an array, a sequence of data. That's when 0 and 1 matters. Um, so 
I may be defining hero name, etc., first name, image, and then powers. That doesn't matter in that order. What's inside further here, that does matter in that sequence, in the square brackets. So image We've got our curly braces there because we're going to have either uh, we could say like small we could say character image and we could say um, weapon image. So that's going to be an array of a couple of bits of data, curly braces there. Break that. I'll say uh, hero image spiderman.jpg. Say. Uh, Town, home image. Where are they from? New York. So, figuring out what schema you're going to create that, as you saw me here, second-guessing myself, that could be one of your first challenges to all of this. How are you saving your data? <coughs> here I've defined these fields. Uh, the name, last name, first name, and an image. I would want powers and all of that. So that'd be a comma and start listing powers. Um, but let's say this is the this is the totality of the data that defines hero one. All of this, remember, technically is one key value pair. What's on the left of the colon, what's on the right of the colon. That's one bundle of info, all that that I've selected. So this is my schema, this is my template for more characters. So if you copy from the quote there to the semicolon, that I could copy and paste multiple times for hero 2 and hero 3 and so forth. And with the right algorithm, I'd be able to do it dynamically. We're not there yet. We're doing this uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a basic kind of way. Later we could do it dynamically. But I've copied all of that info, that template, comma, Next line, paste. Comma there, of course, is very important because that's something colon something comma. Something colon something, and if I have more data, comma. So let's say three characters. So one more comma right there. Hero one and all of its data. Hero two and all of its data, and hero 3 and all of its data. So, hero 2. Let's say here, hero name, Iron Man. Last name, Stark. First name, Tony image of Iron Man, not JPEG, hometown New York, well, they're almost all in New York, so let's say that one, uh, I don't know, Queens. Uh, I know, we'll do Stark Tower. Okay, and then for the third one, again, something else. So I've got the fields. I fill in the fields per character. This is my starting point of data. We can, of course, do this so that we have input fields. We'll see if we can do that today. We'll have input fields. 
what it'll ask you, fill in this, fill in this, fill in this, and that'll get saved into the database. Hero 3. This will be Dr. Strange, last name Strange, first name Stephen, hero name Dr. Strange dot ping, one image Baker Street. Just putting some data. This is obviously not real images and such, but. Um, based on that that I've decided that's that. Now I say, okay, actually I still also now want to save superpower data. Well, that's what I would have been having to figure out early on because right now I'd have to add to three different heroes the data that I forgot to add. Now not impossible, just extra work. I should have figured that out early on before I started to build this whole database. I've only got three to work with, but what if I already put together 30 characters. I'd have to go back, do kind of a lot of work to add those fields that I forgot to put in early on. So just for practice, let's say that. Okay, I should have put in uh, a field for power. I'm going to do it very simply, just one power. So back to hero one. Image with an array of more info, comma, because we're adding another key and value pair. In this case, power, superpower, or whatever. Um, Spidey sense. So I'm going to need the power field for hero 2, hero 3, hero x. So don't forget the comma there. I believe you could be able to, co to copy the comma down to the end of that and paste it there, and it should give you the comma plus the return. Let's see here. Copy the comma, copy all of that, paste it right there. Yeah. It's only three to work with. Obviously, if it was 30, I'd have a lot more work. Power of um, Iron Man, uh, Repul Repulsor, Eames. And then Stephen, Doctor Strange, magic. So I can get more complex with descriptions and all of that, but that's okay. I've got all of this data. I want to set myself up to display it on screen. I'm going to choose one of the characters and display some of that data on screen. So if you had uh, used the same file as before, you had button to show and a div to display the, the results. Since we deleted everything in the script, we'll have to create those two elements again. An element for the button and then an element for the div. Pull the data out show it on screen. So this will be a little practice and then we'll put a little twist on it at the end once we once we do that. So after after my whole database, in my case line 48 var l btn show 
That's document.get element by ID. The particular ID is btn show, comma l div show. That's document.get element by ID. Div show. And the line semicolon. Okay, so we want to make the button active element btn show dot add event listener in the event of a click run function show hero comma false. Then we define function fn show hero. Okay, so we want that we will we will display on screen this data from the database, uh, one of the characters to start off with. Uh, we'll create the variable for string. We're, we're Going to keep it easy, and we'll say simply x hero is the person. Just very basic. Um, so um, hero db dot hero one dot hero name that'll uh, that'll retrieve the the name 
of the first hero. So we'll say here, Doctor Strange is Stephen Strange. So plus quote space is plus I'm going to type this a couple of times, so we'll copy and paste. Hero DB, Hero 1. First name. Plus quotes space. db last name plus dot period let's get a little out of the screen but I could have done it like this just so you guys can see it And so that string that I built, I want to display it on screen. We've got L div show dot inner HTML equal to string. Let's give that a try. Save it and run it. Press the button and see if it displays that information of the first hero. Oops, if you typed exactly what I typed, I made a little mistake here. I'm displaying first name, and then I'm displaying the space between the first name and the last name. I forgot to add another plus right there to continue my string. And so that show Spider-Man is Peter Parker. I've got three characters, hero one, two, three. What if I had heroes one through 50? What I could do is choose a random character. If these are simply numbered sequentially, that would help me to do random numbers. 
I can start with 0, I can start with 1. I started with 1 here. But if they're numbered sequentially here, I could use a random number to choose one of these random characters of the three possibilities. Let's modify our code to do that. Inside of the function show hero, I want to generate a random number based on the total number of characters I have, and then use that random number to display one of these. Because the idea is basically here, display hero1, first name, display hero1, hero name, display hero1. Well, if instead we substitute that with a random number, it will... Um, will then um, choose one of the random characters. So to create the random number, um, let's say before we we start to build that string. I'm going to create a new variable. Uh, we'll call this random num equal to we have the math.random uh, built-in JavaScript object that'll re generate a, a random number between 0 and 1 well we want it to um, generate in our case we've got up to 3 right we've got hero 3 so we want to go up to 3 times 3 so that this could go from 0 to 3 but um, I need to round it because at this point I'll, I'll still get fractions of numbers. So I'm going to enclose that in parentheses. Semicolon at the end before I forget. I'm going to enclose that in parentheses. I'm, it's going to generate some number. It's going to be a fractional number. And I need to round that. And uh, if I if I, I've got a couple of, I've got three ways to round rounding up rounding down uh, forcing it to round up forcing it to round down or it letting it choose well if I do a round down the possibility that I get might be a zero and I did not set myself up here to start with zeros I've only got three I can go back and fix it but if I already had 30 characters let's say I'm not going to go back and renumber all of those down one number less so to avoid the possibility of getting a zero out of my random numbers, I'm, I'll force it to round up. That way it'll be from one to three. So we will, re, we will refine our random number here, math.seal. The math object dot seal. This will um, take whatever I generated with math random times three and always force it up. So if it's a 1.8, it'll round it up to a 2. But even if it's a 1.1, it'll round it up to 2. It'll always force it to the ceiling. It'll force it up. So here it'll be between 1 and 3. To show this console dot log random num save it and run it click the button a few times and in your console then you'll see those numbers it should since it's only three to work with it's not going to be super random but you should see one two three and such randomly being generated you should not see a zero because math seal should force it up
just some random. At the moment, I'm just getting random numbers. This last time, I got number two four times in a row, and I'm not getting any zeros. Um, just to play with it. If you do the opposite, what's the opposite of the ceiling? The floor. If you do math dot floor, this will go from zero to two. It won't get to three. So if we had started our data with a zero index, in that case, math dot floor would work better because we'd be we'd have characters hero zero, hero one, hero two. So math dot floor would force it. If I had a one. 0.1, it would force it down to 1. If I had a 1.9, it would force it down to 1. So with math.floor, there you go, I'm not getting any 3. I'm not 0 5 times in a row, I'm getting 0, 1, or 2. And the third way to round it is to let it decide with math.round. Some numbers will round up, some num numbers will round down. If I get a 1.2, that'll go down to 1. If I get a 1.5, that'll go up to, five, uh, to 2. So it will choose here. Obviously, we're seeing why math floor, math floor is not desired, and math round is not desired here because it would either go too far or not far enough depending on what numbering scheme we use. But just to show the three ways to round it, let's see what I get. So I'm getting now between 0 and 3. So actually 4. 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm getting 4 possibilities. When I do times 3, I'm getting 4 possibilities. So for some instances that would work. Oftentimes, no. Oftentimes, you are choosing either seal or floor. If you're working with an array of serialized data, starting from 0 or 1. But anyway, the whole point of this is that we want math.seal uh, up. So we've got a random number here. And... The, uh, we've got the number of 1 here and 1 there. This again goes back to we didn't quite, now that we're this far, we didn't quite set up our template or our schema to take advantage of the possibility of doing random numbers. Because if I were to do random num right there, that would not work. That's going to try to retrieve data of something called hero random num, not what's in the variable of random num. The way random num would work is if we had an array, and in that array we would have random num. The problem with that is that that's not how we set ourselves up. We didn't set up an array um, to define all of our heroes. We had hard-coded hero 1, hero 2, hero 3. So this is, this is not going to work. I hate to break it to you. We never defined our schema to take advantage of, of this. We figured it out later. I want to retrieve a random hero. And it would make sense, well, if I'm calling it hero 1, 2, 3, well, I simply choose a random number. But you're seeing we didn't set up our data to to take advantage of that. There's no way for us to insert that random number into that into that name of that object. So again, figuring out how, uh, how is our data going to be saved, that's one of the most important things early on. Um, so we're not going to be able to use that random number at the moment, that's okay. We will be able to use it eventually, but here uh, we'll do one more break. Uh, here is again a schema to save our data and if you've had the experience in other databases you might think this this is very different this is very limiting this is very weird where are my relational databases and such um, this is one way to do it 
Uh, it's not the best way. There's never one best way. This is just one way to save data. This is not requiring any, uh, you know, queries at the moment to retrieve the data. It's simply give me the data of here rather than typing arcane commands. It doesn't require the server and all of that. And when we get to PouchDB, then it will be taken to the next level where we will have methods to retrieve and save the data a lot easier. This at the moment is just our introduction to the JSON concepts. Um, and we will go further with it because we, we need to. We need to fully understand it and and apply it for for our, our, our projects. We're going to take one last break. When we come back, we will uh, set it up so that we're going to ask people, type in the name of a, of, a, of a new character and save it to the database. So here we're pulling out data that already exists. Let's add data to the database with an input form. So we'll take one more break. It's uh, We'll do a shorter one. It's 8. 43, just, we'll just go until 8.50, so seven minutes. We'll go into 8.50, and then we'll, when we come back, we'll set it up to collect data.